In this episode of Body Story, we unravel the mysteries of the two most important organs of the human body, the brain and the heart. And as we understand how these organs work, we also see how fragile they are and how easily they're affected by the chemicals we drink and eat. John Palmer's diet is high in cholesterol, and that means danger for the tiny arteries that feed blood to his heart. Fatty growths are blocking the passing flow of blood cells. It's still VF, charging 200. Thank you, everyone. Today, that is going to lead to disaster. Jeez. The alcohol that Greg Moore drinks floods into the gaps between his brain cells. It interferes with electrical signals that flash through his brain. And this has an instant effect, repressing the rational part of his brain, giving the animal within Greg a chance to enjoy itself. Greg's night is only just beginning. <laughs> the whole lot, just get them off as quick as you can. It's falling off, John. The wood they use is completely useless. Well, that's why they brought us in. Do the job properly this time. John Palmer's having a bad day. It's going to get much worse. That wall's in the wrong place. We'll have to take it down and start again. Be right down. Okay. You take care up there, Marcos. For 45 years, John's heart hasn't missed a single beat. But today, it's going to let him down, with dire consequences for his entire body. A ball of muscle no bigger than his fist, John's heart pumps enough blood to fill 40 barrels each day. Inside its chambers, red blood cells saturated with oxygen are sucked in and pumped out with amazing force. They are propelled into a network of blood vessels 75,000 miles long, which supplies oxygen to every organ and muscle in John's body. few problems. They're a hopeless lot they let loose on this place, you know. John's heart doesn't just supply oxygen to other organs. It also supplies itself. Clinging to its surface are narrow blood vessels, coronary arteries, which feed the heart's own muscular walls. The walls of John's heart consist of 50 million elastic muscle cells, all contracting together. This is the beat of John's heart. Yeah, we'll get it done. I'll just have to keep getting my hands dirty, that's all. Yeah, see you later. Bye. John, when you got a moment? Yes. Unluckily for John, Lurking inside one of his vital coronary arteries is a tiny time bomb. A growth no bigger than a grain of sand. It has the potential to alter the course of John's life. There you go. Ah, uh, just a job. Came free with our order. <laughs> Looks a bit like Kenny, don't you think? <laughs> Right. 
The growth inside John's coronary yeah. artery consists mainly of cholesterol. Yeah, I'm listening. Our bodies need cholesterol to function normally. Yeah. But most of what we require is manufactured in our livers. Why? Yeah. John doesn't need the extra cholesterol in his food. The surplus seeps into his bloodstream. Small amounts can be transported safely, but too much and it spills out, polluting his blood with globules of free-floating fat. Yeah, well, we all have days like that, don't we? Yeah, go on then. Cholesterol globules sink into tiny cracks in John's artery wall, creating a fat-filled growth, a plaque. Over the years, it bulges up and out into the artery. Slowly but surely, it begins to reduce the free flow of John's blood. Why? All of us have some plaques in our arteries, but John yeah. has many more than most men his age. Is it on the lorry? Is it on the lorry? The inner walls of his coronary arteries are riddled with plaques. Blood is being squeezed through vessels which are half the width they ought to be. 45 years of cholesterol buildup lurks beneath a thin and fragile membrane. It can't be delivered till when? Go on. John is suffering from advanced heart disease, but he doesn't know it yet, because so far his heart has been able to compensate for the damage. Well, I'll just have to manage, won't I? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll see <sighs> Only a week ago, a patch of his heart muscle became starved of oxygen. The gray muscle cells sent a distress signal to nearby coronary arteries. New blood vessels began to grow, a natural heart bypass bringing a fresh supply of oxygen to the starving cells. But this kind of bypass takes at least two days to grow, too slow to save John if an artery were to block suddenly. If anything else goes wrong today, Pete, give us a cigarette, will you? <laughs> give us a light one. John's heart is designed to respond to the needs of his body moment by moment. While he's sitting still, it needs to beat no more than 70 times a minute. To maintain its precision, it uses electricity. The heart is the only organ with its own power supply. A natural pacemaker very deep in its walls generates electrical pulses which ensure its regular beat. Each pulse surges through the cells which make up the heart's muscular walls, forcing them to beat in unison and keep perfect time. Let's be having you then. What kind of lunch break's that? What are you getting, mate? We've got another job to get to after this, you know? Another 10 minutes. Hey, get the ball against that wall. The whole lot will probably fall down by itself. <laughs> <laughs> 10 minutes left. Come in, come in, come on. Oh, oh, on, 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 on. Oh, there you go. Oh, oh, come on, the ball there. Give it to me, come on. Give it back to me. As John chases after the ball, 70 heartbeats per minute is no longer enough to meet his body's demand for oxygen. It's a long time since he did any exercise, and his leg muscles cry out for extra fuel. His brain sends an urgent signal to his heart. The pacemaker reacts instantly, stepping up the rate at which it fires.